Okay, so uh, the arrow here represents the proton's motion. It starts with an initial velocity of zero, and when it's done accelerating, it has a velocity of 7,500 meters per second when it enters this magnetic field. Um, the, uh, the magnetic field here has a magnitude of 0.45 Tesla. All right, and this is a, a proton. So uh, for part A, we want to know through what electric potential must the proton pass. So uh, we'll use uh, work energy here, right? We'll say that the sum of the works done by all the forces is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Um, and we're going to assume that the only force is the electric force here. Now, uh, the electric force, the work done by the electric force, could be found with F delta S cosine theta in this case. We're assuming it's a uniform electric field that, uh, that the proton is accelerating through. Actually, it doesn't say that, but we don't want to use this anyway because uh, we don't know uh, delta S. And uh, we could find it. We could use this, but it would be a lot harder. I think it would be easier here to use minus delta UE because that's minus the proton times the delta V, that external voltage that the proton is moving through. And that's what we're trying to solve for. So it'd be a lot easier to use that. So I set minus Q delta V, Q, that's the proton's Q, and then that external voltage, I'm gonna set that equal to the change kinetic energy. And of course the initial kinetic energy is zero because V naught is zero. Okay, so this is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs for the charge. And then that delta V that we're looking for. And then the mass of the proton is 167 10 to the minus 27 times 7,500 squared. When I solve for delta V, I get minus 0.29 volts. Okay, now that makes sense because the the proton is being accelerated in this direction, so since that's the direction of the acceleration, that's also the direction of the electric force, and it is also the direction of the electric field. And you know that protons, anything moving through an electric field like this, electric field lines point from, uh, you know, if, if this is the electric field, then it points from high potential down to low potential. Okay, so if we do delta V, which is final minus initial, we expect it to be negative in this case. Okay, the proton is going to move to a lower potential. So that finishes part A. Now for part B, uh, let's see. So now we're going to consider this region. Okay. Now in this region, we have a different uniform electric field that is enabling this proton to continue through in a straight line. Now, if only the magnetic field were present, then the magnetic force, the right-hand rule tells us the magnetic force would point down. And so if only a magnetic field were present, then this guy would just start going in a little circle, right? So that's the magnetic force. So in order for this to move in a straight line, there must be an equal and opposite electric force that points up. And since the electric force points up, the electric field points up. So there's our direction for the electric field, right? So since... The magnetic force points in the minus y direction. The electric force must point up. Uh, and so the electric field also points up since it's a positive charge. So we need the magnitude of the magnetic force to equal the magnitude of the electric force. That's QVB is equal to QE, where Q is the moving charge, which cancels out. And so the magnitude of the electric field, then, is just VB, where V is the velocity here. Notice I haven't put any capital letters, or I hadn't put any hats on the V. I didn't capitalize it, like voltage. You really want to be careful with this. Don't confuse velocity and voltage. Um, so that's just 7,500 times 0.45. And so the electric field is uh, 3,400 volts per meter, and it points up. So there's our answer for part B. Okay, for part C, if the electric field is turned off, sketch the path of the proton through the magnetic field. Oh, we already did that. All right, so it's going on a little 
circle like this, a little uh, counterclockwise circle. Uh, we have to determine the radius of that circle. Okay, well, for the circular path, if this thing's going around in a circle, then we have the sum of all radial forces is equal to is equal to zero. At least that's the way I always do it. Um, and the radial forces acting on this thing, well, you got uh, the magnetic force which points radially inward, and you got the centrifugal force that points radially outward, right? And our convention is that if it points outward, then it's positive, and if it points inward, then it's negative. So we have plus the centrifugal force minus the magnetic force equals zero, right? And if I solve that, I get uh, R is equal to mv over qb. Okay, that's little v, that's the velocity, right? So um, R is equal to, uh, let's see, you got the mass of the proton, its velocity divided by charge of the proton, times the magnetic field. All right, so if you multiply all those things out, you get R is equal to, uh, looks like uh, 1.7 times 10 to the minus four meters, 0.17 millimeters, so pretty small. And that's it.